If you currently tender for work, or are planning to do so in the near future, you will sharp understand the importance of planning. Planning is important because it allows us to understand the bid at the earliest opportunity and tick off the key requirements, allowing us to do things such as make a bid, no bid decision, understand what the buyer needs, what our USPs are, and how we can put together the best possible tender submission in the time we have. To make sure our bids are thoroughly planned at Hudson, we use a bid plan a wide, overarching document which details the key criteria of the bid, what the buyer's after, the key dates such as the deadline for responses, deadline for clarifications, and the questions themselves, including a breakdown as to how we will answer that question and the information we need to do so. As part of this, it also can include the key parties that we need to liaise with. These could include, on, say, our side and the client side, as a result, this ensures that from the earliest opportunity, everyone is aware of their role and their responsibility as well as when everything is needed. Things you need to consider in a bid plan are what the buyer's requirements are, how we can respond and reflect those requirements in the bid, and the key personnel to be working on the project. This could be inside your organization or out if you're working with subcontractors, for example. You should be scheduling your time. For example, we typically schedule around 10 to 20% of bid planning time in the actual plan itself, making sure that everything at the earliest opportunity is understood and ticked off. This includes things like the key clarification dates. This could include making sure that the, we're eligible to bid for the tender altogether and that all the project team are aware of their roles and responsibilities. Thereafter, programming key milestones such as the first review date, the proofreading date and the submission date are all paramount in making sure that time is used effectively. The latter, the submission date, we typically recommend to be a few days at least before submission. To avoid unnecessary time management issues, I would say the underlying principle is being aware of the time we've got and how we can best use that. For example, this could be scheduling the more complex or the more difficult elements of the bid first. This could be a difficult question or a large question, or it could be information that you may need from colleagues or peers that's more difficult to obtain. By doing that, the bulk of the work is out of the way first, and it means that the time management process is more efficient towards the end. The key risks of poor planning are elements appearing later in the bid's life cycle, which could include for example, a missed question, it could include information that we can't feasibly obtain within the timescales, or it could even be something like that we're not eligible for it to bid for the contract altogether. Those should be identified during the bid planning stages, and as we allocate around 10 to 20% of our time in doing so, that makes sure that there are no unexpected elements late in the process. As a result, planning is paramount. <laughs> When assigning and distributing workloads, I would recommend identifying the project team at the earliest opportunity and the key roles and responsibilities of every member of that team. So for example, this could include allocating questions to certain individuals within the team, key tasks such as collating information. It could include things such as proofreading, reviews, stuff like that. By making sure that everybody is aware of their roles and responsibilities at a given time, it avoids the potential for confusion later in the process, or even potential conflict as to who is responsible for what. Why is it important to ask clarification questions? Well, imagine you submitted a bid that you thought was perfect, but it was non-compliant. You may have priced it wrong. You may have tackled a question, no matter how well you may have tackled the question, you might have approached it in the complete wrong way. Clarification questions are therefore your friend. So, when you've got even the slightest niggling doubt about how to approach a certain question or what the buyer is asking for, how to price something, ask a clarification question because that way you can get clear, consistent advice straight from the horse's mouth. Picture the scene. Everybody's running around, it's submission day, the bid isn't finished, and there's still a million and one things still to do. This, if you set an internal deadline, would likely not be the case, 
because by then you would have allocated time for proofreading, you'd have allocated time for documents to be collated. This therefore means that you can submit ideally the day before the bid's due in, making sure that, the, that on submission day there's no last minute surprises, shall we say. We all know those people, those who like to tell you where you've used an apostrophe wrong, or where you've used the wrong irregular verb form, or even where there are too many spaces. People at the end of the day are human, and buyers are too. So the last thing you really want to do is spend all the time and effort putting together compelling, engaging content and a well thought out corporate branded design, and then littering the page with something that hasn't been proofread that may be full of typos and mistakes. After all, we're all human as well, the writers. As a result, proofreading is paramount. After all, the last thing you want is a badly written bed. <laughs> My advice for making sure your bid is submitted on time is making sure that you are organised prior to the submission date. So, as well as the planning measures which I spoke about earlier, perhaps try creating submission folders. For example, submission folders that we use at Hudson typically contain all of the documents that we need to submit. So when we're logging on to a tendering portal such as ProContract, for example, we have a list of everything we need to upload there and then. And we can use it almost as a checklist, checking off what we need. Also, another key tip is just wherever possible, avoid submitting on the deadline day. The last thing you want is a last minute rush, trying to find information that you thought you had, which you actually don't. So. They're my two key points. I'd say create a submission folder so you're aware what needs to be uploaded and when, and don't submit on the deadline day if you can. So, to summarise, my five tips for making sure that you submit your bid on time. One is proper planning and preparation. Make sure you've got your bid plan set up. Make sure you understand the questions, you understand the tender, you understand what the buyer needs. Two, sort out your time management, sort the schedule out, make sure that you're aware of how much time you've got on it. Three, establish your project team, assign your workloads, make sure that everybody's aware of who, need, who needs to be doing what and how. Four, ask clarification questions. Is there anything in the bid that you're unsure about for any reason? Whether it be in regards to site visits, what the buyer's specifically looking for, and five, set internal deadlines. I would set these as key milestones across the entirety of the project lifecycle. So consider when the first drafts to be completed, when proofreadings to be undertaken, and an internal submission deadline. All of these key tips will make sure that you can submit a bid in good time and to the highest quality. So if you're struggling for time, why not outsource bid and tender management to us? With over 60 years experience and an 87% success rate, you can rest assured that your bid is in safe hands. Get in touch for a free quote.